little red. It's not a Honda. It's what I call a Donda. It's a Dumac. Here's the badge. Now, a Dumac, DMAC, Dumac or DMAC, people tell me, is a Chinese copy of the CG, Honda CG125 from way back in the 70s, I think, 80s, 70s, 80s. Um, DMAC is a Malaysian brand, so it's basically just bought into Malaysia and then branded as DMAC. The question is, is it worth buying? Should you, should you buy a 4,000 ringgit new, which is less than 800 pounds, Chinese made 125? I think you should. However, I've lost my head. Hey ho. So, I bought this bike three, maybe four years ago. It's a DMAC D7, that's what they call it. Um, I think also known as sometimes the DMAC Classic. 125, as I've said, CG125, Honda copy. And what they tend to do with most Chinese bikes of this sort of age, and probably still going on now, is they give you a fairly detuned version of the engine so it's not strained. So. The simple fact is, if you're a Matt Rempit, which uh, you guys in Malaysia and Indonesia know what I'm talking about, but if you're not from these areas, basically it's the, the young guys that ride the motorbikes fast, race down the roads. And if you look on, on YouTube for Matt Rempit, you'll see they do the Superman. They literally lie flat on the tanks and they race in and out of traffic on motorways on like Yamaha, on these, uh, what they call capchis, which is the step through motorbikes. Yamaha 135 LCs and things like that. And if you're into that sort of thing, your bikes will walk all over this. This bike, it's hard to tell because I've, I need to really get the, a GPS and sort of do the speed test on it, but it struggles to hit maybe 110 on the clock and the clock's wildly inaccurate. Um, 110 is kilometers, so that'd be just over 60 miles an hour. But it's wildly inaccurate. It's probably more likely that a top speed is somewhere around about 50 miles an hour, um, which is probably, I don't know what that is in kilometers, but I can put that in up here, down there, somewhere. I'll put it in. Um, so, my feeling is this if you want a bike that costs like half the price of a Capchi, if you're happy to go a little bit slower, that you know, if you're going out with a load of mates, then obviously this isn't going to work, so it'll be pissing off ahead of you. But if you're just kind of happy to run this thing, and I run it flat out pretty much all the time, um, it doesn't rev very high. It revs to like about six and a half to seven thousand revs. That's it. But again, that's providing the clock is right. And I don't for one second think it's right. Um, then you can probably pop along all day at let's say 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, so I'll, first of all, I'll tell you the, the, the problems I've had with it. Because obviously you're thinking, oh, Chinese motorbikes, they're crap. I've been in Malaysia 11 years. In the time I've been here, I've had um, a Yamaha FZ150i, which was a competent bike, but dull. I hated it. I, I, I didn't have any affinity with it. Um, then I got a Yamaha Virago 535, which I thought was quite, quite nice. V-twin, you know, sort of a Harley-ish look-alike. Um, not that I like Harley, I don't like Harley's but a Harley-ish look-alike. And I basically fell out of love with that pretty much the first day I got it because I drove it into work and one of my staff members, a young lady, said to me, that's an old man's bike. And it is, you know, it is. It's, I mean, I tried, I made lots of changes to it. I might, I don't, I don't know if I've got any pictures. If I've got a picture, I'll put some pictures up. I made changes to it, I took off, the, I chopped out the back end, I single-seated it, I did quite a few things. Um, and it did look okay, and it went nicely. It was nice. I mean, it's not fast, super fast, but I could cruise longer, 130 kilometers an hour, and it sounded great. It had great exhausts. Missed it. So when I had the the Yamaha, I also bought this bike. When I bought it, it was blue. So you know, I had to make some changes. So um, basically, when I got it home, about a week after I got it home, the the the, the official DMAC uh, wet workshop closed down in Johor. And so 
the only official one I think then was in KL. There's no way I'm going to ride all the way to KL. I'm British, so we're kind of like, we want to take our bikes to the official dealership. However, that's not how it works in Malaysia. You just find a back street shop, make friends with them, and then they'll look after your bikes forever. And I found one. Uh, but at the time, this was blue with pathetic blue flames on it. And obviously it had um, panels on the side. I had a higher exhaust fitted, so it came out here. So it looked a bit sort of off-roady. But I, put, I changed that back to the original because my granddaughter goes on the bike and having a hot exhaust off the back of her leg isn't what I'm looking for. Um, recently I've put the knobby tyres on, not because I'm going to go off-roading on it, like off into the hills, because frankly it hasn't got the horsepower to pull a put in. You know, it hasn't got any torque at all. Um, just because I want to go off the road, but not up on wild trails, this thing wouldn't do it. But I mean, if you want to go off the road into the fields, then I can do that and the tyres are fine. Plus also I like the look of them. Um, I always have, ever since I had a Yamaha DT175 when I was a kid. So, would you, should you buy one? If you don't mind not being the fastest kid on the block, if you like the le retro look of this bike, retro look, and if you're, pre if you're prepared to maintain it. These things don't have an oil filter, so you basically you want to change the oil about every 2,000 kilometers. I've only done, <laughs> I can't even do this, hang on. I have to start the bike. I'll explain that in a minute as well. I've done 12,300 kilometers in four years, so no, it's not been uh, ridden like to excess at all. So what's gone wrong in that time? And why have I just had to kickstart it? First, I had to kickstart it because I've taken off the side panels and on this side panel, behind this side panel is a battery and it's just ugly and I don't really need it. I can kick it easily enough. So when I turn the key, nothing happens. So I have to kickstart the bike. From day one, the fuel tank has leaked, had leaked. So it's the leak from the bottom. I got it um, welded up by my local garage. However, it has leaked from day one also from the fuel cap area and nobody seems to be able to do anything about it. So every time I fill out a fuel for, until the tank is down a significant level, a suitable level, I get fuel coming out of the tank. Not lots, but enough that it stains it disgustingly and I need to clean the tank regularly and it smells of petrol. Um, little bits have fallen off, but no, nothing major, to be honest, nothing major has gone wrong with this bike. Um, even to the extent I, I, the, the um, clutch cable broke about five weeks ago and I managed to ride it home about six kilometers uh, by just changing gear um, without a clutch, clutch just changes, and doing everything possible not to stop at junctions and traffic lights, which meant going really, really, really slow, or meant going really, really fast, as fast as I could go. And, um, well, fast as I could go in second or third. And I got it home, and I had to get back and obviously got it fixed, and it didn't cost anything to fix. If you want to maintain these bikes, these bikes are simple, they're cheap to maintain. Would I get a CG125, sorry, would I get the MAC-D7 again? Probably not. But that's because there's so many other things out there now that I like the look of. But am I happy with it? Yes, I bought um, an MLE XTMR, which is a 200cc uh, sort of dual sports bike. And it, when it came down to getting rid of one, I got rid of the Virago because I wanted to get the Ninja 250, which I've now got. But then it came down to I had to get rid of one of the other two so I couldn't have three bikes. And I liked the little... XMLE, MLE, but it was too slow. This is a 125 and it's slow, but it's expected to be slower. If I get a two, 200, I expect it to at least have a bit more pace. It was too slow. And the fact is I kind of have an affinity with this little bike. I like it. I think it looks cool. I'll tell you now, nobody stopped me on any of my other bikes ever and have said, this is a really cool bike. I've caught people taking pictures of this thing. I've caught people like looking at this thing. I've had people stop me in car parks, tell me how much they like it. It astounds me. I mean, I don't know if I had a DeMac badge on it, they probably wouldn't say it, but it's got the Honda and they all believe it's the old Honda. I always tell them, I never tell them lies. I always tell them it's the old, uh, I tell them it's a DeMac, but I don't barely clean it. Um, it's kept out of the rain, but it's not inside. It's a good little bike. I, I really, you want to get a motorbike? You want to get a little, 125cc it's a good bike and the funny thing is of course it's second hand now I can't sell it if I was to sell this bike 
I'd probably be getting like maybe a thousand ringgit, which is 200 quid. What is the point? There's no point selling it. I might as well just keep it. And I use this like for these kind of things. I want to go adventuring rather than take the Ninja where I don't kind of want to leave it or drive it through hedges or over sort of fields or whatever. Then I take this bike. If I'm going longer distances, I take the Ninja. So if I'm going short distances shopping, I'll tend to take this bike. It's just the way it is. So I love this little bike. I think it's a cool little bike and I'm very happy with it.